thanks for coming to see me talk today. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Cyberling Legacy here in Akron. Uh, Akron's a great city indeed, but have you ever thought about the Rubber City's history? No? No. no. All right. Everyone that drives has to buy tires, which Frank Cyberling had a huge role in industrializing the tire manufacturing in Akron. I'm a lifelong Akron resident, specifically Goodyear Heights, and um, I've been a guest in his home several times over the years, and I want to tell you a little bit about him and his family's legacy and their contributions to the community. Um, first off, he worked for his father, J.F. Cyberling. His name is Fred, who owned the J.F. Cyberling Company, which was a farm manufacturing um, business. They made farm equipment. And Frank and his brother Charles opened up Goodyear in 1898. Goodyear was named after Charles Goodyear, who was the inventor of vulcanization, and that is actually a chemical process used to harden the rubber in the tires. Um, and ironically, Mr. Goodyear died a very poor man. Um, so the Ohio history documents claims. Um, F.A. And Chief Engineer William State invented the Cyberlink State tire machine, which really bumped up production. And they were going from making five tires a day at that time to making 60 tires a day. So that really bumped things up and really got the industry going, making a lot more tires. Um, and with that, by 1910, Frank was making a salary of about $3 million a year. Um, according to the Ohio History Central, in 2013, Goodyear was still selling over $13 billion worth of products nationwide. Um, with his generous salary, him and his wife Gertrude were able to build Stan Hewitt. They traveled to Europe to get inspiration for their new style home, which is a Tudor revival style home. And Gertrude was able to help do a lot of the planning for the estate she was, um, she attended Bookdale College, which is now known as Akron University. And um, there she studied architecture, horticulture, and interior design, according to the Ohio Woman's History website. She was also a gifted singer and musician and artist, and she had artwork displayed in New York and Ohio art galleries. Um, as a matter of fact, many of her paint paintings are on display right now at the Stan Hewitt Estate. Um, many events were hosted there at the estate. Family celebrations, weddings, and holidays. They also had many famous guests due to their prominent positions in the community and influence that they gave. Some of their guests included to their 65,000 square foot home, Presidents Taft, Presidents Coolidge, President Harding, the Von Trapp family, Will Rogers, Thomas Edison, and Helen Keller. They were all interested and focused on community. And um, Frank developed for his employees the Fairline area for the white collared employees. And for the blue and blue collared employees, he developed Goodyear Heights area. Um, he was known to all of his workers to be a fair man, and he treated his employees well. He was also um, a founder of People's Hospital, Fairlawn Country Club, and he was a Metro Parks Commissioner for the Metro Parks in the early days when they first started for Metro Parks. Um, actually, the Metro Parks also received many, many acres from him. Um, he originally had 3,000 acres of land, and they received quite a bit of that land to build up Sand Run and to develop the Nature Realm area. Um, Gertrude loved nature very much and enjoyed the natural beauty of this area and she actually founded the Akron Garden Club. Um, one of the gardens at the estate is the Japanese garden and she was so inspired by the book The Secret Garden that's where they got the design for that garden. Um, as time went on, Goodyear was refinanced and restructured. Brothers Frank and Charles stepped down in their positions. However, Frank remained on the board of Goodyear until he was 90. Um, 
other buildings to maintain the property, housed workers, like the carriage house that was housed the groomsmen and the chauffeur, the gardener's cottage and the garage also housed their workers. The gate lodge originally housed the estate superintendent. However, when money started to dwindle and they had to start letting go of their employees, the son and daughter-in-law, Henrietta, moved in with their children. And at that time, through a mutual friendship, she introduced Dr. Bob and Bill W. together, and they actually sat down to discuss and identify the fundamental principles of AA. And that was considered to be their first official meeting of AA. Gertrude passed in 1946. Frank passed away in 1955. After they had passed 75 of their family members and leaders in the community and in the tire industry, met at the state to decide the future of what was going to happen. It was decided to give the estate to the community. The Women's Auxiliary was formed to renovate and do the repairs that needed to be done to bring it back up to par. Um, currently, Stan Hewitt is the sixth largest historic home open to the public in the United States. The estate, with a longtime motto, non nobis solum, not for us alone, has over 170,000 visitors a year. Ohio Mart, Father's Day, Father, Father's Day car show, excuse me, AA Founder's Day, plus weddings, professional photo shoots, corporate events, and daily tours, um, guided and unguided, um, just for you to visit and see the special features that the house offers, like the plunge, which is an indoor pool, and the gymnasium. They also have a bowling alley located in their house. The, room is, the house has 65 rooms in it, and it includes 23 bathrooms, 18 fireplaces, a photography room, a flower room, a library, among many other different specialized rooms. And outside currently sits on 70 acres with 10 separate gardens, a greenhouse, botanical gardens, butterfly house. You can actually take your pet, your dogs there, and walk the grounds. They have bridal trails there, so you can go horse riding. And they also have a gift shop and a cafe, which is called Molly's Cafe. And Molly's Cafe is actually an ode to one of their old draft horses that worked with them and took them into town. And it would bring the Yule log in at the holiday season. So that's how Molly's Cafe got its name. Um, after hearing a little history behind the family that brought early Akron together. I hope you take advantage of a day at Stan Hewitt to enjoy the beauty of the property and the area. I think it's really cool to know their story behind the tire and what made Akron the rubber city. And it really is an amazing place to visit. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I forgot, this is a picture. This is a picture of Frank and Gertrude. And they're just a sweet little couple. So, yeah. Thanks a bunch, guys. Gertrude, what a name. I Gertrude. know. <laughs> Ooh, that's an old one. Yeah, they bring it, it in. It is. Rentals.